thing that we we tell speakers all the time that you can you can be good enough on stage, but if you're great to work with and you just make the 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 job of the event planner, uh, the decision maker, you make their life easy. And like you said, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are, um, you know, that you're this prima donna diva or anything, but you are. Uh, when they ask you for something that you're replying quickly, that you're getting what they need back to them, that whenever you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time for uh, a tech run through or sound check, that you're there, that they're not having to chase you down for things like yeah. those things really, really matter. And they can be a big difference maker for, um, you know, whether or not a speaker gets hired on a consistent basis long term. Yeah, absolutely. They're huge. The the thing about the speaking business that or the conference business that uh, that speakers don't understand it when they get into it is that from the point of view of a meeting planner, it's there's a huge amount of downside risk in their business and not yeah. much upside potential. And and think about it. If for all the conferences you've ever been to, right? If something goes wrong, you notice and and that's the kind of thing that motivates you to write that note or or to uh, to mark it down in the comments. If everything goes great, you probably don't notice. Yeah, yeah. So how can a speaker contribute to that? Like how can a speaker be the one that, that they're, they're fine on stage? They're, again, it's kind of good enough, um, but what are the things that, that a speaker can do off stage that really moves the needle for uh, an event planner that makes them more referable and, and the type of speaker that they wanna work with long-term? Yeah, so be absolutely consistent in your dealings with uh, with, the, with the Bureau and, and, and as you alluded to, um, never be late, uh, never forget, uh, never drop a ball. Um, one of the things that you'll find as you get into the business is that surprisingly often that 45 minute speech that you're expecting to give turns into a 30 minute speech mm -hmm. or a 20 minute speech. Um, and uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've had standing backstage and I don't do a lot of speaking. I do a little bit. I'm mostly a coach, uh, but how many times I stood backstage and the, uh, the, my handler will come up to me and whisper in my ear, uh, Nick, we're running a little late on this. Can you carve uh, five minutes off the yep. end of your speech, 10 minutes off the end of your speech? You're expected at that point to say, yep, no problem. Yeah. That's what the pros do. Uh, and you're not expected to throw a hissy fit at that point. 